Hi, in this video I will show you how to create an ordered or numbered list and put the numbers in circles using Elementor and CSS. Let's get started. So I have my Elementor page here and what I will start with is using a text editor widget. So I will just drop it here in a new section. And now I want to create um, an ordered list, ordered or numbered list, and I want to put those numbers in circles. So I will click here numbered list and make a few items, something like list item one, list item two, list item three. Now, if you're using Elementor Pro, go to the advanced panel and custom CSS field. If you are using a free version, you won't have this field, but you can use the same code uh, to place it in a plugin and uh, you can use the same CSS and get the same effect. I will show you how to do that with a free version at the end of the video. For now, I'm using the custom CSS field and I will put my code here. So first thing I want to do is let's just style this uh, font a little bit. So I will type selector and I will write list item. Font size, I want to put to something like, let's say 22 pixels. Let's say color should be black and font weight. I will just increase it a little bit, put something like 600. Then the next thing I want to do is increase the line height a bit. And uh, for this, I won't be using pixel values. So for everything other than the font size, I will use EM values. And uh, you can check actually the difference between pixel and EM values and why I'm doing so in one of my videos. But uh, I won't write, let's say 30 pixels here, I will write 2EM. Two this basically is some kind of percentage value relative to the font size. And the reason I'm using them in short is that when I change my font size, everything else will also change proportionally. So I don't have to change every value, I just need to change the font size and all the other aspects like paddings or line height or uh, the circle sizes and so on, they will change accordingly while keeping the same proportions as the ones that I defined. And the last thing I will do here is position relative. Now let's, base, yeah, let's create the actual circle. So uh, these list uh, numbers, one, two, and three, they are markers in unordered lists in CSS. They're called markers. Now, if you go ahead and click selector, type selector and list item, and then put marker. And let's say I want to apply a background color to this. So if I type in background color and put something like red, you can see that nothing happens. That is because the marker does not have a background color property. So what we will do is that we will create a before pseudo element that will be empty and then we will give it this background color and position it correctly so that it sits right behind our numbers. Now this before pseudo element we will apply to our list items. So I will delete this actually. And now let's type selector, list item and before. And now what first we need to do is define the content. The content will be empty because we don't need any, it can be a, 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 some symbol, it can be a letter, anything you want. For this, we don't need any content. So we'll just leave it empty as this. And now I can set background color to red. Now still nothing is showing because we need a few more properties to define. So I will type position absolute, display inline block, and then I will set the width and height. So width can be something like, let's say 0.6 EM. Again, I'm using EM values for the reason that I just mentioned. And height, I will set also to 1.6 EM. So it should be the same. And the reason for this is uh, that I can basically create a circle. I, I had a typo here, I think. Yes, so let me just exit and already you can see that we created these squares now first thing is we want a circle you can leave it as a square but i want a circle so i will set border radius to 50 percent 
Now, another thing is that you can see that it's on top of our text and you want it behind. How we will do this is using Z index property and I will set it to minus, minus one or minus any number that's basically below zero. And uh, the last thing that we want to do now is to position these circles correctly in terms of where they stand behind our numbers. And first I will use a uh, left basically alignment. So I will set left and I will set something like minus 1.5 EMs. You can play with, with these values. Uh, for me, this is what it works. And the next thing I want to do also is the top value. I will just shift it a little bit down, not too much. So something like 0.2 EM will work for me. Now there are a few more things I would like to do here. First of all, I want to, to create a bit more air and distance between these numbers and the list items. So in order to do this, when I go back to my selector list item, I will set some left padding here. So padding a left, I will put to 0.8 EMs. Again, I'm still using EM instead of pixel values. And the last thing I would also like to do is to set these markers to give them a white color. And now we will use the marker, so selector, list item. Basically what selector does is that it selects the, the element from Elementor that I'm currently editing, which in my case is this text widget or my unordered list. So selector list item, marker. And then I want to give it a color that I want, which is in my case, white. And there you go, we've created this uh, basically circles, the circles around our numbers. You can play with all these values. And now I will show you why I used EM values instead of pixel ones. Let's say that I want to create, I decided to make my text a little bit bigger here. So instead of this font size 22 pixels, which I've defined for my list items, I want to set it to something like 28. Now watch what happens if I set, if I write here 28. You can see that everything basically uh, increases its size. Everything resizes proportionally and accordingly to the font size. If I set this to 18, you can also see again that everything resizes and repositions itself uh, proportionally. So this is actually, this saves you a lot of time because you don't need to go through all these values and set them depending on your font size, because everything resizes um, in terms of your font size. That is the main property and everything else is relative to that. So this is the reason that I'm using EM instead of pixel values. Now let me show you what would happen if I was actually using pixel values and not EM values. The line height, while well, I'm still with these 18 pixels, I will set line height to something like, let's say 26 maybe pixels, or maybe a little bit more, maybe 36. Uh, padding left, I will set, say that it should be something like maybe 40 pixels, maybe less, let's say 30 pixels or 22 pixels. Let's leave it at 20 just for now. Uh, then we also want to change the width and height of our before pseudo element. So if I put this to something like um, 20 pixels or 25 maybe, and set this also to 25 pixels, maybe a little bit more, let's set this to 30. And set index we will leave, a left value we will put to something like um, 24 pixels and top value will put something like four pixels maybe maybe here i will in i will put this to 28. yes let's leave it like this now i'm using pixel values everywhere not em values this time now watch what happens if i change my font size from 18 to let's say 28. Now you can see that actually nothing else changes, just my font size. All the other values, like the height, the width, the paddings, they stay the same. So they don't change proportionally to my font size. In this case, I do want them to change accordingly. And that's why in this case, it's much better to use EM values instead of pixel values.
Now let's see how to achieve the same effect if you're not using a pro version, but you have a free version of Elementor. In that case, you won't have the custom CSS field here. So all this code that, I, that I've that i used, and I've pasted my previous code with the EM values that I or originally uh, typed, basically. And I will use that code, but uh, I will put it in a plugin where I can use custom CSS. So if you're using a free version, this custom CSS field will be disabled. So let me just remove this code from here. And you can see that first our list is reset to default look. Then I will go to the advanced panel, layout, and I will give it a class. So I will just type, let's say, uh, circular list. Just type circular list or whatever you name you want and remember it. I will click on update. And now I will go to my uh, custom CSS and JavaScript plugin that I'm using to put basically custom CSS code. And I will put the link in the description. And in this plugin, we can now basically uh, put the same code that we used before. And uh, if you watch the video, you can just basically use the same code. And instead of selector, which is uh, basically targeting our element, instead of selector, I will put the class name that I've just defined. In my case, it was circular list. So I will type dot circular list. And then everywhere, instead of selector, I'm putting dot circular list. That means that the code is applying to that element, to that class. And now let's see, and everything else basically is the same. So if I now click on update, let's see what happens. I will preview my changes and you can see that we achieve the same look. We have the numbers in circles and we didn't use basically a uh, pro version this time. We used the free Elementor version and just uh, we placed the, the code in our CSS plugin. So that's it. I hope you like this video. If you have, don't forget to like, comment or subscribe.